Once your screen is taped and your ink is mixed and your registration paper is made, you are ready to start printing your first color. Now you can screen print on anything like t-shirts and bags, but the most common thing that we're going to print on is paper. Most paper will work well, but the best paper that I've found is called Bristol paper. And the reason we use it is because it's very smooth and it's very thick, so it doesn't really absorb the ink and it does not get soggy. It holds its own shape really well. For my first round of color, I taped off the parts of my composition that I'm going to print in my second round of color with a different color. So I've cut my Bristol paper to size and I've taped it onto my registration while it's all lined up. This is so that it doesn't move during the screen printing process while I'm lining up my screen. Once my screen is all lined up, I'm going to spread ink along the top of the screen. My ink needs to go as far as my image goes. So anywhere on there, my ink needs to go as far as the image goes. I would rather have too much ink than not enough. So I need to check and make sure that I have enough ink across the top to cover the whole print. When I'm ready to print, I need to have a partner hold my screen in place. They also need to be the ones that have clean hands so that when I lift up my screen, they're the ones with clean hands to remove the print from the registration paper so that I don't get any murky fingerprints on my paper. A few notes about pulling your first print. You need to use your squeegee to pull all the way down to the bottom of the image on both sides. Each pull should be smooth and you should be pressing your screen onto the paper. For a smooth finish, don't hesitate in any area and you should only need one pass in each area for your ink. Once my paper is removed, I'm going to check it over to make sure that it's exactly how I want it to look. So as I'm looking at my paper, I can see that there's some ink spots that I don't want there. So I'm gonna take some tape and I'm going to tape over um, just some extra pinholes that I missed before I do my second print. In this process, I would do a minimum of four prints so that you can make sure that you have enough prints in case something goes wrong, but also if you wanna alter it after, that's really helpful. Now I'm transferring all of my ink back to the top of the screen. This is called flooding the screen. And then I'm re-adding any bare areas of the screen that need more ink to pull through. You're gonna do this with each print. For my second print, my partner is going to take a new clean piece of paper and they are going to tape it down, get it all registered so that my next print can be exactly the same as my first print. And then I'm going to reline my screen up right on top and pull my second print. I would do a few more prints but after you're all finished, you're going to take all of the extra ink, you can use a little squeegee, and you're going to remove it from both your screen and your squeegee, your big one. You'll put this extra ink back into the coordinating jar. So in this case, this is my custom mixed ink, and I'm going to put all of it back in so I can use it for future prints. You're going to let your first round of prints dry, but once they are finished drying, it's time to tape your screen off again and print that second round of color. In this case, all of my bugs are my second round of color. So I taped off the butterflies and caterpillars in my first round of prints, and now I'm going to print them in a different color this time. To make sure my bugs are in exactly the right place, I'm going to take the prints that I've already made and re-register them on the paper. I'm taping my paper in place and then I've also taped off my whole screen except the bugs. So this is a lot of tape, but it is definitely necessary in order for me to print nothing but those little bugs. On this first print, I can actually see where my image lines up with my screen, but I won't have that luxury in the second ones. So I can line it up right now to make sure that those little butterflies are gonna be in exactly the right place. Then I'm going to take my contrasting ink color, which is a light blue, and I'm just going to spread it along the top where my bugs are going to be. Since this round of images is really small. I won't need as much ink as I did before, but once I'm done inking, I can have my partner hold my screen again, and I'm going to do one full pass with my color. Check it out. You can see that I've got some areas that maybe I missed with my tape, 
And this is why I usually don't use my favorite print from the first round for my first print in the second round. I want to make sure everything is perfect before I do that second round of my really good print. So this is my favorite print from my first round. And now I'm going to make sure to tape off all of those extra ink spots before I do my second round. So while you weren't able to see that, I went through and taped off all those extra ink spots. And now I'm ready to pull my second print, which will hopefully be better than the first round of prints. You can see here that my ink is not only cleaner because I pulled my last print faster, um, all of those extra ink spots are also gone from the print because I taped it off in the second. For printing on any sort of fabric, you're going to place cardboard between the layers of fabric so that they don't stick to each other and you have a hard surface for printing on. Then you're going to pull the fabric tight using binder clips to hold it in place and also make sure there's no wrinkles. You're going to print with one color usually because all of your registration really has to be eyeballed. And then you're going to line up the image on your screen as best you can with where you want it to be on the shirt or the blanket or the fabric, and then you'll pull your print. Once your print dries and you get home, you should plan to iron the ink so that it cures before you do any washing of the fabric. 